Now we come to the naval battles of the War of 1812. The largest and most important naval battle. Where was it fought? Margaret? Lake Erie. Correct. Who was the commander who won this important battle? Finney? We did. <laughs> I ask you for the name of the commander who won the battle. Well, we're waiting. Uh, it's coming, just a second. Jamie, can you answer this question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it was... Oliver Hazard. Ah, oh, that ain't right. Perry, Oliver Hazard Perry. That is correct. And Finney, you stay after school and study your history. You could have whispered it to me, but you got to show off. Arithmetic next. Um, you seventh and eighth graders exchange papers. Give me that paper. Give me. Oh, you give it to me. Oh, I can't see. Yeah. Give me the paper. in the middle of the classroom. Did you? Yes, sir. He didn't even give me a chance to defend myself. Is that true? Yeah, I guess so. Well, would you mind telling us why? I'm waiting, Jamie. It was just something between Finney and me. I see. Finney, can you shed any light on this matter? Well, it was just like he said. Who hit first? He did. Is that true? Yes, sir. Well, I'll ask you once more. Why? Now, Jimmy, there's no excuse for fighting in a classroom. You've embarrassed us all. Mac, I apologize for Jamie's actions. And Jamie will apologize as well. Jamie. I can't. I think you better go to your room. I don't understand what's got into that boy. When he's wrong, he usually admits it. Finney! Are you holding something back? No, Pa. If I find out you are, I'm gonna wait a tar out of you. But, Pa, he, he hit me first. <laughs> oh, Ben, I don't mind telling you, I, I'm a little embarrassed myself. My boy's got 10 pounds on yours. Look at him, he's got two black eyes and... Well, Jamie don't look like he's hardly got a scratch. But, Pa, he got the drop on me. Dog, oh, get on out of here, alibi. I... I'm sorry, Ben. I... I just had to find out what's going on. Don't worry, I intend to find out for myself. Hey, what happened to you, Finney? Did you walk into a door, too? Nah, Jamie hit me. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? Jamie did all that? Will you stop embarrassing me? Jamie did pretty good. Yeah, you really whopped it on him, huh? <laughs> sure did. <laughs> you wouldn't eat? 
He say no thanks. Jamie Nutty, something pretty wrong. Something must be pretty wrong. You know, usually when he has problems, he discusses them with us. Uh, no use to waste good stew. Well, if he won't eat, he won't eat. Don't worry about it. All right. How sing not worry about Jamie? Maybe you ought to go upstairs and try talking to him again, huh? Wouldn't say anything before. No reason to think he'd say anything now. I sure wish I knew what that fight was about. Well, whatever it was, must have been pretty important to get him acting like this. Well, there's one way to find out what that fight was about. Talk to an eyewitness. Let me see Miss Griggs. You want us to go along with you? No. No, you just finish it now. That's no joke. There was another eyewitness to that fight. Finn McLean. Right. Won't you me and go go have a talk with him? I'm with him. Second call for dinner. Fine kettle of stew. No, thanks. You're only a boy. You need food to grow on. <laughs> Too much of me already. The bigger I get, the more trouble I get into. You're not as bad as you think. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm worse. Maybe so things get better when you're full grown. Eat stew. You'll be a big man before you know it. No, thanks. Teaching eight grades, I find it takes a little night work to stay ahead of my students. I'm sure it does. Your housekeeper told me that I'd find you here. I... I won't take up too much of your time. I've been expecting you. You want to know what started the fight? Yes. Finney had something of Jamie's and refused to return it. So, uh, Jamie had cause. In the classroom, there's no place to settle an argument that way. I agree. I, uh, usually make myself a pot of tea about this time. Perhaps you'll join me? Thank you. I'd like to. Mr. Cartwright, may I ask a very personal question? Yes, of course. Are you adopting Jamie? Why do you ask that? Excuse me. Uh, this will explain. Jamie Hunter. Jamie Hunter Cartwright. Jamie H. Cartwright. Jamie Cartwright. Finney took it from Jamie's desk. He was going to show it to the other children. That's what started the fight. Well, we know what he was thinking. A very private thought. Jamie didn't want anyone to know until it happens. If it happens. I've given it serious consideration. There are several problems. Jamie is an orphan, isn't he? Yes. But there may be relatives somewhere. He must have a clear idea of where he's from. Everywhere, nowhere. Mrs. Griggs, Jimmy's father was a rainmaker. Traveled to a hundred towns and a dozen states and territories. Can Jamie help? No, he's tried, he's tried. All he can remember is the, the traveling. Well, his father kept a journal of sorts, you know, names, a few addresses, 
Mostly towns, uh, dates of arrival, dates of departure, weather, condition of the roads, things like that. I've written to every sheriff and mayor in every one of those communities. You must have had some answers. Yes, a few. And all of them from people who knew no more about Jamie and his father than we did. That they came, stayed a few days, moved on. No wonder your home means so much to Jamie. It's the only security he's ever had. You know, his father gave him very valuable inner security. A lot of love. We've been able to give him some roots as well. Mr. Cartwright, what are you waiting for? Not a thing. Not a blessed thing. Jamie Cartwright. You sure it doesn't sound any better to him than it does to me? Pretty good. Yeah, she was getting kind of filthy. Yeah. Is uh, Jamie still up? Well, last time I heard, he was doing his homework. Yeah. See Mrs. Griggs? Yeah. Did she tell you about the paper? How do you know about the paper? We talked to Finney McLean. Yeah, he's a real nice kid, that Finney. Well, we wouldn't know what we know if he hadn't told us what he did. We wouldn't know how Jamie felt, would we? I think we've probably known all along. We've just been a little lax in doing something about it. Yeah, I think the time has come. That is, if you two are in accord. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. That's uh, it's a pretty important decision for us to make. Yeah, I've already lived through one little brother, Paul. I don't know whether I can stand another one or not. <sighs> Decision's unanimous, you know that. Absolutely, 100%. I think we ought to do it right now. Right. I think we better check with the party concerned. No. Jamie, maybe you didn't understand what Paul said. Oh, I understand. Well, we, we thought you'd be as happy about the adoption as we are. Why should I be? You always feel sorry for me, that's all. Now, Jamie, that's not true. We've always felt you were part of our family. We just want to make it legal. No, you don't. It's all because of that dumb old paper in school and that Finney McLean, that's all. You don't really want me around here. Jamie, that just ain't so. They had nothing to do with it. Oh, they didn't? Well, then would you please tell me just why you're bringing it up tonight all of a sudden after all the trouble I got into today? Well, I admit maybe the timing isn't of the best. But believe me, this is no spur-of-the-moment decision. It's something we've been thinking and wanting for some time. Look, Mr. Cartwright, you don't have to make any excuses to me. I'm a man and... I well, almost anyways. And I can pull my own weight around this ranch. And any time, any time at all, you don't want me around anymore. All you have to do is say so, all right? Now, if you'll please excuse me, I've got some homework to do. Young man. I'm going to pick you up after school tomorrow. We're going to ride into Virginia City. What for? You'll just have to ride along to find out. You make sure you wait for me after school. <laughs> contains everything we know about Jamie, except what he's told us, Judge. Well, there's not a good deal of health here, Ben. No birth certificate for Jamie. No wedding license for his parents. There's a picture in there. I know, Jamie. I was merely trying to find some reference to your mother's maiden name. Yes, sir. Jamie never really knew her. She died when he was about two. Hmm. Did your father ever mention 
where she came from. What about your grandparents? Did your father ever mention them? No, sir. Do you know anything about any other possible blood relatives? No, sir, not a thing. It's been what, Ben? About six months since you first talked to me about possibly adopting oh. Jamie. Yes. You were going to write to everyone whose name and address appears in these papers, attempting to locate or communicate with any possible blood relatives. Yes, I, I did that. I, I wrote to all of them. Most of the letters were returned undelivered. I wrote back to those who didn't reply. I take it without any success. No. Well, that would certainly seem to fulfill the statutory requirements of this state, inasmuch as no blood relatives have placed uh, prior claim so far as Jamie Hunter is concerned. I would say your legal request for adoption now has complete validity. Thank you. There's still some facts to be determined that you've provided a good home for Jamie, fulfilled his needs as to proper food, clothing, education. I'll draw up the adoption papers. It'll take a few days. Well, that does it, Ben. Thank you, Judge. Except for one, one more thing I, uh... Oh? It's a matter of Jamie's consent. Well, there's no requirement in the law for that, Ben. Jamie being a minor, he has no say in the proceedings. I'd still like it a, a matter of record. Very well. Jamie Hunter, a petition for your adoption has been filed in this court by Benjamin Cartwright. What is your wish? regarding this matter. Well, Jamie, is it your wish to become Benjamin Cartwright's legal son and heir? Uh, yes, sir. That's him, Ben Cartwright. The boy's his son? No, his name's Jamie Hunter, but he lives with the Cartwrights. I've heard a lot about Cartwright. Very distinguished looking man. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your help. More than welcome. I suppose I'd have to change my name to Jamie Cartwright. Yes, legally and for all time, that'll be your name. Of course, I wouldn't be exactly like Cost and Joe. I mean, they'd be in your real sons and all. No, you wouldn't be exactly like them. That's true. I didn't figure I would be. Well, Jamie, they were given to me, Cost and Joe. Given? By their mothers. Blessed gifts they were, too. I didn't choose them. You're a little different, Jamie. You see, I did choose you, because I wanted you to be my son. It's been some time since I've seen everything so ship-shape around here. Yeah. You seen his room? He can shave himself right off the shine of the floor. That is, when he gets old enough. <laughs> you know what Hopsang heard him say this morning? <laughs> Said he wanted to grow up and be a perfect cartwright. I'm not so sure I wanted to see him try to be a perfect cartwright. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Give him another week or two, he'll be just a average, aggravating boy. <laughs> something I can do for you? Would you, by any chance, be Jamie Hunter? Uh, yes, sir, I am. I'm Ferris Callahan. Oh, pleased to meet you. And would you like to see Mr. Cartwright? I would indeed, my boy, and you too. I'm your grandfather. Fighting? Fifteen. I thought 15 would be taller. Well, I think he's about the right size for 15. Yeah. Well, he's healthy. 
You do go to school. Uh, yes, sir, I do. He has excellent grades. This is a fine brandy, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> well, Jamie, I expect you're surprised to see me. Yes, sir, I am. Well, I've been hunting for you for years. <laughs> Tracing a single swallow would have been easier. Your father was constantly on the move. Yes, sir, he was a rainmaker. He went where he was needed. <laughs> so I have been told. Is uh, this your first trip to Virginia City, sir? Yes, it is. A Pinkerton man traced your father to a town called Cottonwood, North Dakota. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. His luggage was still there, held by an innkeeper for non-payment of lodging. In the luggage was my daughter's wedding license and Jamie's birth certificate. And the sheriff there had a letter from Benjamin Cartwright inquiring as to Hunter's family and relations. Well, that's how you got here. Yeah, uh, stroke of pure luck. If Hunter hadn't run out on his bills, I might never have found Jamie. He didn't run out on him. He was going to pay him. So he said at many times and at many places. Uh, he was a charming man. He charmed my daughter. Nevertheless, he was a deadbeat and a charlatan. You have no right to talk about my pa like that. Why, well, I have every right, and your manners leave something to be desired. Mr. Carwright, tell him to leave. Jamie. As soon as the formalities are attended to, we're both leaving. You are going to Boston with me. Jamie. Jamie. Cartwright, he might as well know now. I've already told Judge Taylor. You know of my petition to adopt him? I do. It's your misfortune that my men located him at this time. My wife is dead. I have no other family. I want my grandson now. Mr. Callahan, you saw it for yourself. He doesn't want to leave here. Oh, he's just a young lad. he will change his mind tomorrow. He doesn't realize this primitive area has none of the advantages that I can give him. The finest schools, the finest society, familiarity with all the social graces. I am a rich man, Mr. Cartwright. The Callahan Clipper ships are known around the world. I appreciate what you've been doing for him, but now that I've located him, it's no longer necessary. Necessary? You've never considered it a necessity. Jamie is part of this family. He's happy here. Are you trying to tell me that you're the only man that has the ability to make him happy? No. But I am wondering why you want him. Is it for Jamie's good or for your own? How dare you have the gall to say something like that to Callahan, me? Callahan, I've listened to every single word you've had to say. Not once have you thought of what Jamie might want. What he wants is what I can make up in the counts. He's only a boy. He's not a boy. He's a young man with his roots deep in Ponderosa soil. This is the life he knows, the life he wants, the life he loves. You're wasting your time and mine, Cartwright. I'm taking him with me. I'll do my damnedest to stop you. You can't win. Jamie's my grandson, blood kin. There's nothing you could do to change that. surprised to see him as you were. You were? It's your fault. You wrote the letters. To clear the way for the adoption, Jamie. Now, look, I, I know you're, you're hurt and you're upset and with reason. You bet I have reason. You were with me at Judge Taylor's. You know what yeah, I said. Yeah, I know what you said. You said you were going to adopt me. And then this stranger comes along and says he's going to take me away. Well, he hasn't taken you well, away Well, he yet. will. No, I'm, I'm going to see Judge Taylor with him tomorrow. You know what the judge said about blood relatives and claims and things like that. I don't know what good it's going to do you to see him now. I don't know either. But I'm going to do everything humanly possible to make sure that you stay here. Now, you must believe me, son. Don't call me son. I'm nobody's son. And I never will be. I'll 
be back for the boy this afternoon. Same way myself. Maybe he's hungry now. Have seen cook him something. Make him feel better. Oh, don't even bother. He won't answer. Still hard to believe. It's like he's been with us forever. That Barney Paul, there ought to be something we could do. Yeah, like what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to Carson City. Judge Taylor can't do anything about it. Maybe the governor, the attorney general, maybe they can help. Hey, we're not going to give Jamie up without a fight. Jamie, have you had a good look at this witness trip? This isn't Joe's name. That's right. They made this swing with you, too? Yes, they have. On various occasions. I'll bet they have. Why don't you put your name there? It's a long trip to Carson City. You get hungry. This for you and your grandpa. 
No thanks, officer. But Jamie, it's a long ride. You get hungry. Look, we don't want it. Please, Mr. Callahan, can we go now? You're not very talkative, lad. You got nothing to say. Aren't you curious about where you're going, what you do, where you live? No. Well, once you get to Boston, you will be. Hey. It's broken. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's broken, all right. There's no way you can move from here. Yeah. We got to. We got to some way. Jamie? Jamie! Jamie! Come back! Jamie! Come back here! clothes? Sure, you're the one who needs them. <laughs> Here, put this under your head. It's better than laying on the rocks. All right, thank you. <laughs> there wasn't a blanket in the fool box in the blackboard, so this is what I have to do for now until I get a fire going. On the blackboard. Yeah, the Team ran themselves out. I got them picketed and grazing in a piece of pasture about a half mile up the road. Of course, it's all right. And buckboard needs a few repairs, but I can fix it. <laughs> Fool box. What's that? Well, it's a box under the seat of a livery rig. Holds emergency stuff. This one was empty except a canteen and a hatchet. Irish linen shirt of mine you're destroying. Made to my order in Dublin. Oh, if it's strong enough, it'll do. Do what? Well, tie these splints on your legs. That's what the boards are for. You mean to say that you're gonna try to set the bones in my leg? No, I didn't say that. I said I'm gonna splint them so they can't move until a doctor can get at you. 
Wouldn't it be more sensible to go for help? And leave you here most of the night, no fire? Well, you could build a fire for me before you go. Sure, and it'd last you maybe an hour. You think you're cold now? Well, you're not half as cold as you're gonna get. The cold is due to shock. You can't tell me nothing about that. I've set the bones of half a hundred men's legs at sea. Well, then you know this is gonna hurt. Yeah. Is that Springfield? You're your mother's son, all right. Stubborn as a rock. Well, you don't exactly been like a willow, Mr. Callahan. Well, there's a difference in being right and knowing it and cutting off your nose to spite your face. Well, still got my nose. Big air speech. What you haven't got is the lunch the Chinese cook tried to give you. Refusing it was an act of pure churlishness. Whatever that means. It means going hungry, for one thing. Well, now, if you need a picnic basket to eat, you're not much account around here. You can reach the wood. Keep the fire going until I get back. I won't be long. Now, the rabbit, I can understand. You snared it. But the fish... Can you make a snare? No, I cannot. I know knots and lashes. I'd only have to seen it done once to do it. Yeah, well, making it's just the easy part. You also gotta know where to put it. The trout ought to be ready in a couple minutes. It's a lucky thing you had a piece of string and a hook in your pocket. <laughs> I didn't have either. You didn't? How'd you catch them? I tickled them. Well, it's like making a snare. You gotta know how. I see. And who taught you that? Mr. Cartwright and Haas and Joe. Out here, you gotta know how to take care of yourself. It was a good meal. I thank you. You're welcome. I wonder now how far I'd have to go to find a place to crawl up to the road. Let's say about a half a mile. Half a mile? All those rocks and brushes. Oh, I'd never make it. Well, I'll have you up there in the morning. You carry me up there. Yeah, haven't the strength. Sad thing, though. If I had a decent block, a hundred feet of rope, I could make it. If you had wings, you could fly. Now, I know you don't like me, but that is any excuse for you being impertinent. I'm just saying what my pa used to tell me when I started wishing for something I couldn't have. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, you know what my father used to say? If wishes were horses, beggars might ride. What did your father have to say about me? Nothing. Elizabeth is only five years older than you are now, and she met your father. She could have had her choice of the most eligible men well, in the world. She picked my pa. She did, yes. She ran away with him. Three letters in three years. Never a return address. The last letter she wrote, she said she had a son. And then there was one letter from him. Cholera. Mother was dead. You're trying to make it sound bad, but they were happy. Happy 
<laughs> you were two years old when she died. How could you possibly know? Because my pa told me. She was as beautiful as a field of mountain flowers. She loved to travel and see new country every day. She never asked or wanted more than my pa had to give her. And they were happy. All right. <laughs> I agree, agree to that. I admit I did try to stop the marriage, and then I tried to find her to ask her forgiveness. Why, I've been hunting for you for years. Why? Because you're my grandson. Because you're part of my family. You belong in my house, in my home. Where I could give you schooling, social graces, stature. How can you object to that? Why did my mother run away from you? Oh. Oh, uh, sure, I, I don't know. I, I loved her. I gave her everything I could. I suppose I wanted her to be like her mother was. She had ideas of her own. I asked her to come home. You wanted her to leave my pa? No, no, not then. I didn't. I wanted a son. Elizabeth knew that. I wanted a boy that I could mold and form to grow up to be a man to take my place. I suppose that's the real reason why I wanted Elizabeth to bring you home. Even though she didn't want to? No, I didn't think about that. I only wanted her to do what I thought she should do. Eh, that makes me an old fool. I'm stuck with it. Too old a fool to change. Yeah, I guess you are. Something else the cartwright to talk to you, I suppose? That's right. Something's too heavy to lift, you find a way to pull it. That's what I meant when I, I asked for a block and tackle. Yeah, which we didn't have. And we had to wait till those horses weren't too wild to work for we could do this. Now, what we gotta do is get your shoulders up here near the end and tie in with whatever we got left of your shirt. Then we gotta put your bad leg up on that branch over there and tie it in there, see? so the branches can kind of act like a spring pad, you know what I mean? You're an ingenious young man. Cadet material, right now. A little more training, and you're third mate. And you'll be on your way to your master's ticket. Any tonnage, any ocean. Yeah, well, right now it's on the way to the road in the Ponderosa. And I'm gonna need all the help you can give me, all right? <laughs> okay, here we go. not quite everything. I'm a blunt man, Mr. Cartwright. I usually say what I have to say without any fuss, but this time it's not so easy. Jamie likes it here. The Ponderosa is his home. He's made that quite plain to me. I hate to admit it, but Jamie belongs here. Well, we, uh, we feel that way, too. Thank you. That's settled then. I... I'll tell Judge Taylor. <clears throat> I still want him to see uh, Boston, the house where his mother was born, and the Callahan ships. 
Oh, I'm sure he'd like to visit you very much. You bring him there, Mr. Cartwright. The things I'd like to show you, too. It'd be my great pleasure. Well, I'll, I'll be down in a minute. say thank you. Well, yeah, you did. But your idea or Ben Cartwright's? Mine, sir. Well, I've said it, and I'm not going to change your mind. You needn't worry about that. I know that, sir. You did? How'd you know it? Well, uh, you yell a lot, but you're not as mean as you want people to think you are. I'm not, eh? No, sir. I still want you to see where the Callahans live. All right, I'll come and visit you. I look forward to it. You're a grandson to be proud of. By Jimmy Cartwright. And that still sounds kind of strange. We'll both get used to it. 